The legend of the crossroads is one of the most notable fables ever told. You stand at a crossroads to meet with a demonic entity in hopes it will change your life, but in return you must offer up your greatest gift, your soul. Many blues legends were supposedly born from the famous Mississippi crossroads like Tommy Johnson and the most famous of all, Robert Johnson. Within a matter of months, these men were transformed into legendary blue artists, which seemed impossible. To back the claims, their own family members also accounted to these crossroads and how these musicians had faced the fated deal with the devil. These crossroad legends were also found in Japanese culture called Sujiura. Unlike selling your soul, it instead involves these entities or strangers telling one's fortunes. The game was mainly played by children and teens, but caused major problems at the time when the game was popular, as once these fortunes were read by these strangers, the youngsters would then unalive themselves, because they couldn't live with what they heard. Tonight, I will walk the crossroads to play the daring game of fortune. I'll admit for many years, I have been driven with my own ambitions to become a great influencer, but as you all know, had very little success. Am I someone that has enough drive to possibly conjure the unthinkable? Or just maybe, I might have a stranger come along and tell me my fateful fortune. Does this crossroad devil really exist? Or is it yet another one of these imaginative legends trying to explain away what seems impossible? It's said long ago this fortune telling ritual inspired Sujiora Senbei in Japan which were crackers with fortunes in them on strips of paper. Within post-war America, Chinese restaurants adapted this creation and renamed them fortune cookies. There is no known date as to when this dangerous game first surfaced in Japan, but some say it was late 1800s to early 1900s. In Europe, there was a strong belief that ghosts walked these crossroads and the devil himself could be found at the crossroads disguised in human form. It's understood these tales caught wind in America as there were rumours of certain local musicians disappearing and coming back to break records, as well as bringing in vast amounts of wealth and fame. The Crossroads Devil had taken a different form it seemed, one that could grant you your greatest desires, but those desires also came with a dire cost. One case that has never really been answered was that of Robert Johnson. Born in 1911 in the Mississippi, Robert at a young age acquired a passionate love for music, most notably the blues. Around 1920, Robert moved with his mother across the Mississippi River to commerce in the Mississippi Delta. Whilst there, he gained attention with the locals who started to call him Little Robert Dusty. A friend of his that was interviewed years later recalls Robert playing the harmonica and jaw harp to the locals. One of Robert's earlier songs, Selling Your Soul to the Devil, came under scrutiny from those around him and sadly by 1929 Robert's first wife died of childbirth. Locals felt this was divine punishment for his songs that involved the devil. It was then recalled soon after his wife died Robert had given up the husband and farmer life to become a fully fledged blues musician. Now a known blues musician Son House who had moved to the area noticed Robert was a competent harmonica player but had little faith in his guitar work and stated that Robert couldn't play at all. The facts were that Robert was more than determined to become the best blues musician that had ever lived. That's when one night he up and left his hometown mysteriously and vanished not saying an absolute word to anyone. Now rumours say he was instructed to take his guitar to the crossroads near Dockery Plantation at midnight. There he would meet as described a large black man who was in fact the devil disguised as a human. The devil would then tune his guitar so Robert could in fact rock his audience to their knees with his music. In return the devil asked for one thing from Robert, his soul. Now Robert hastily agreed as he didn't understand at the time it would mean a short life. But confident in his stride, Robert decided to return home almost a year later to show off his newly acquired guitar talent, which shocked the locals. Note that at the time it was well known among blues musicians of these crossroads in the Mississippi and the devil that walked it. This is it. This is the place. 
is where it all happened. Son House himself in an interview confirmed it was a strong possibility Robert went to the Mississippi crossroads whether he knew what he was doing or not. After his return, Robert spent many years going from town to town, playing in front of local pubs, barbershops and restaurants, as well as seeking tips on the street with his guitar. His songs raised ears to those that heard it. People knew Robert Johnson was in town with his music just by hearing it. Eventually, Robert got in touch with American Records and recorded 29 songs between 1936 and 1937, which were an instant hit. Robert also made a song about the very crossroads he visited, which is one of his most famous songs to date. Unfortunately, things were very short-lived for Robert, as his recording career only lasted seven months, because in 1938, at the very young age of 27, Robert Johnson was found deceased near Greenwood, Mississippi. Strangely, his death was never reported publicly and no autopsy was ever done. On the death certificate, it stated no immediate cause of death was determined. It was later suspected that congenital syphilis may have been a contributing factor, but that still doesn't explain how he really died. There was one speculation of a jealous husband of a woman who Robert had flirted with at a country dance in one of the towns he visited, and was later handed a poisoned bottle of whiskey by that same husband which made Robert violently ill. Some witnesses did claim he died in a convulsive state of severe pain. Whether or not this is true, the short-lived legend that was Robert Johnson and the mysteriously early grave he was put in created even more speculation into the devil owning his soul at the crossroads. This further widened the theory across America and eventually the globe. Tommy Johnson, unrelated by the way, was another case like Robert being that he was once a farmer who vanished for several years to then return to be one of the most influential blues players in the Mississippi during the 1920s and 30s. His very own brother, Lee Dowell Johnson, admitted Tommy had told him he had been to the Mississippi crossroads and made a deal with a mysterious figure who tuned his guitar. This predates Robert Johnson and where the rumours of the devil at the crossroads could have very well began. Obviously now is the better time than any to be on these crossroads to meet my fateful entity that may tell me my future or gift me the power of fame. If you call it that, I don't know. Let's see what happens. <laughs> In case anything wants to interact with us while we're on these crossroads, these devices will let us know. With a quick Google search of the time here, it is midnight the same time that Robert Johnson supposedly met the devil at the crossroads. Let's get this over and done with It's two degrees outside <laughs> and you brought me out here to meet I don't know who. REM pod's over there by the sign. We will hear it if it goes off. I've got the EMF with me. I wanted to know if there's an entity out here at these crossroads that I'm fated to meet. Show yourself to me. so silent out here. I bring great desires to be a huge influencer one day. I've had hardly, well some success, but hardly any. Show yourself to me. Prove to me that the crossroad devil exists. Is there any entity out here with us right now that wants to meet me on the crossroads at midnight? I'm waiting with my ambitions. I mean, this ain't the Mississippi crossroads, but they reckon any crossroad works, so. <laughs> What's that? It's temperature spike. Is there something here with us? Very, very interesting, I just, Heard that too, eh? That was weird. I don't know what that was all about, but I could just hear it in the distance, like beeping away. Oh, yeah. I, don't think <laughs> I heard in the distance, I was like, what's that? What's that beeping? I can see the light still shining, but it's not beeping anymore. That was super strange. So it's not beeping, so it's not strong enough, but it is still creating that light. There's a possibility because of the cold weather, you know, the mildew is resting on it, that's creating that to yeah. occur. It is very cold out here. It's going off constantly, isn't it? Is anything here with us? I 
I'm just gonna turn that off. See if the REM pod itself just goes off. Still no entity though. No one wants to take my soul, apparently. Yes, it's a bit of an older country road, this one. This was part of the old highway many, many years ago, so I thought this would be a greater crossroad as any, you know, to see if I can meet anything. But yeah, nothing much at the moment, except for that temperature spike. That, that's, that was pretty out of it, but that's about it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna now try the Japanese version of the Fortune game and see if any stranger would like to walk along here and uh, tell me my future. All right, for Sujiura, I have two items here. Uh, one is a comb, which is required as your instrument, as they call it. You need to strum this. Pillowcase. Now, this is meant to be used in case a stranger does walk past you. I'm um, to put the pillowcase on, so I can't see the stranger. And they're meant to read me my fateful fortune. So, still got the REM pod on here. And of course, my EMF. Apparently, for this, I have to strum the comb three times and say a slight little ritual. One, two, three. Sujiora, Sujiora, grant me a true response. Sujiora, Sujiora, grant me a true response. Sujiora, Sujiora, grant me a true response. Anyone? Hello? It's uh, it's pretty isolated out here, so it'll be interesting if someone does come along. Did you hear that? Oh, he is playing tricks on me. Hello? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this over my head anyway. You meant to only put this on when the stranger has approached you, but you know if someone passes this right now, it's gonna look like I'm kidnapped, eh? This is Two so... guys in the middle of nowhere. This is so weird. And one of them has a pillowcase on his head and the other one has a camera. Anyone around? Just Hello? Me. Anyone want to come say hello and tell me my fortune? What's behind me? I can see a slight light over there. Go towards the light. If you take two steps back, you're going to hit the room bottom. Uh oh, that's just silly. <laughs> There's uh, nobody here. Understandably, we are in a very unpopulated area. It is pretty desolate out here. So obviously there's not gonna be many people just casually walking past, you know, around midnight around here in the, out in the farmways. But um, it is always worth a try, isn't it? <laughs> it seems the legend of Sujiora and the devil at the crossroads looks pretty bland. Let's get out of the cold, Levi. Time to go home. It does seem a uh, devil lurking at the crossroads awaiting to hear your greatest desires in return for your soul is quite a big myth. Robert Johnson may have indeed visited the crossroads after hearing rumours that it might change his life. But what I can tell you is Robert would have met nothing but an empty road. Back in those days, people died from all sorts of medical mysteries because medical science itself just wasn't up to date yet. And I can tell you that uh, botched medical certificates, they were pretty common back then in the 1920s. Trust me, Robert did not sell his soul to anyone. He just had a case of very bad luck and ill circumstances, whether this was uh, murder or not. As for Sujiura, I don't know how this game is played in Japan, but I feel pretty confident in saying after strumming a comb, a stranger does not just randomly come up to you and tell you your fated fortune. <laughs> Unless, of course, the dude was trying to get a sad kick out of scaring some innocent child or teen. Which, I mean, that would make a little sense. Regardless, rest assured, I've done many, many hours of scouring online to try and find these apparent suicides that have occurred due to this game of Sujiura and come up with nothing at all. So, there is no proof out there that any teen or child unalive themselves due to this game. Again, this is one of these urban legends that has been made up and added the thought that you could die from it to add that real scare factor. This clearly makes Sujiura and the Crossroad Devil officially debunked. There's going to be more debunking on the way, so do tell me. Would all of you like to see me debunk next?